Albert Einstein, a German-born theoretical physicist, said, Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it, he who doesn't, pays it. Compound interest accelerates the growth of your savings and investments over time. Watch this video till the end and you could be taking the first step towards becoming a millionaire. Meet best friends, John, Priya, Raj and Kelly. They have been friends for 10 years and have now graduated from the same university. They all found good jobs in their respective fields of study. To celebrate the occasion, they all decide to meet up at John's house for beer. They picked John's house for a meetup as they wanted to get financial advice from John's uncle, Randy, on saving money for the future by investing. Randy was working as a financial consultant for a Fortune 100 company. Here is how Randy explains the investing benefits of compound interest. Before diving deep into the power of compound interest on investing, Randy explains few financial terminologies as follows. Principal. The principal is the initial amount which you deposit as part of investing or saving. For example, if you deposit $5,000 of your savings as an initial deposit, then your principal is $5,000. When you invest, your aim should be to not lose the principal amount. Deposit or withdrawal. This is the dollar amount which you plan to make a contribution or withdraw from your investment. If you contribute $100 monthly, then your contribution is $100. Inflation is the rate at which the value of money decreases with time. For example, $5 might now get you a good breakfast with coffee and toast. But five years from now, $5 might get you only coffee and no toast. This is because the price of coffee has increased, but not the value of $5. So it is very important to increase your income to keep up with prices, in other words to fight inflation. Always put your money where it can grow at the rate of inflation, which is possible only by investing. Interest income. It is the money gained on top of your principal amount. If your principal or initial deposit is $5,000 and annual rate of interest is set at 5%, then the interest income at the end of the year is $250, which is $5,000 multiplied with 5%. Compound interest is when you earn interest on both the principal and the interest income. The $250 earned as interest income can be added back to principal amount of $5,000 making the new principal as $5,250. So with rate of interest of 5%, the new interest income second year will be $262.60. Don't worry if this is too confusing. In subsequent slides, we will discuss compound interest in detail with realistic scenarios. Let's assume you have $10,000 of savings, which you would like to use as principal amount for making more money. You now have two options. Option one is to deposit in bank and expect an annual rate of return of 0.01%. Or, Option two is to invest $10,000 towards stocks or real estate. The historical average rate of return on stocks over 20 years is 10%. But it's a no-brainer to choose investing as you get a higher interest rate of return and interest income. Since your goal is to make money to fight inflation, you need to look for an option that has a better rate of return. So let's dig more into option two to learn the power of compound interest. In between, if you want to learn more on the benefit of real estate investment, then check out my other video titled, Get Rich by Investing Not Savings. I will also put a link in description. To better make you understand the benefit of compound interest on investing, let's consider four scenarios. Raj chooses to play a cautious game and decides to keep his money in the bank which will give him a maximum 0.01% yearly interest income. 
Unfortunately, this is what majority people do fearing taking the risk. John starts investing with a principal amount of $10,000, but decides not to reinvest the yearly interest income. Basically, his principal amount will be the same every year. Kelly starts investing with $10,000 as principal and $500 as monthly contribution. But she plans to stop monthly contribution after 20 years, that is the year 2042. Priya will hold off investing until 2042. From the year 2042 she plans to start with a principal amount of $10,000 and a monthly contribution of $1,000. Yes, double the amount of Kelly. For simplicity of calculation, let's assume they will retire 35 years from now, which is 2057, and will invest in stocks, which is known to give 10% rate of return over 30 years. Let's now analyze how the money will grow for the next 35 years in each of the scenarios. Let's consider scenario 1, which is for Raj. Raj chooses to play a cautious game and decides to keep $10,000 in the bank, which will give him a maximum 0.01% yearly interest income. So we can conclude the following from this scenario. The duration will be 35 years. The investment type will be bank since he plans to deposit his money in a bank. So the annual rate of return will be 0.01%. With this information, let's put the data in the table. At the end of the year 2022, with $10,000 as principal and an interest rate of 0.01%, Raj will earn $100. Since he does not plan to reinvest the $100 back into principal for next year, his principal for 2023 will remain the same as $10,000. So his interest income for the year 2023 will be $100 again. This will continue until the year 2057, as the duration is 35 years, which is when he plans to retire. At the end of 35 years, Raj would have made a profit of $3,500 by depositing $10,000 in the bank in the year 2022, which is not that impressive, as it won't help fight inflation. Let's consider scenario 2, which is for John. Unlike Raj, John decides to invest in stocks and not keep money in the bank, as the rate of annual return is higher compared to the bank which is 10% over the long term. This comparison is similar to scenario 1, but the profit is greater as the money is invested and not kept in the bank. So we can conclude the following from this scenario. The duration will be 35 years. The investment type will be in stocks. Since he plans to invest in stocks, his annual rate of interest will be around 10%. With this information, let's put the data in the table. At the end of the year 2022, with $10,000 as principal and an interest rate of 10%, John will earn $1,000 as interest income. Since he does not plan to reinvest the $1,000 back into principal for next year, his principal for 2023 will remain the same as $10,000. So his interest income for the year 2023 will be $1,000 again. This will continue until the year 2057, as the duration is 35 years. At the end of 35 years, John would have made a profit of $35,000 by investing $10,000 in the year 2022. This scenario proves that investing will yield a better return than saving in a bank. However, this does not show the power of compound interest as the interest income is not reinvested. Keep watching you will be surprised what compound interest can do to your money over long term. Let's now look at scenario 3, which is based on compound interest. Kelly plans to choose the path of investing in stocks. She also plans to make a monthly contribution of $500, but only for the next 20 years, which is 2041. So we can conclude the following from this scenario. The duration will be 20 years. 
The investment type will be in stocks. Since she plans to invest in stocks, her annual rate of interest will be around 10%. Her yearly contribution will be $6,000, as she plans to contribute $500 every month. With this information, let's put the data in the table. For the year 2022, principal will be $16,000, which includes an initial $10,000, and a yearly contribution of $6,000. Applying a 10% annual rate of return, the interest income at the end of 2022 will be $1,600. So the year end balance will be $17,600. Let's now calculate for the year 2023. The principal will be the previous year's balance, which is $17,600, plus a new yearly contribution of $6,000, which adds up to $23,600. Applying a 10% annual rate of return, interest income earned will be $2,360 and year-end balance will be $25,960. As you see, due to interest income carried over to next year's principal, the yearly interest income keeps increasing. Which is great. Since Kelly plans to make a monthly contribution for the next 20 years, Let's calculate her balance at the end of the year 2041. The starting balance at the beginning of the year 2041 will be $356,553. I used a website to calculate these numbers. I will be providing the link in the description. Please feel free to play around with different numbers. Adding the 2041 yearly contribution of $6,000 to this balance will provide the new principal for year 2041, which is $362,553. So at the end of the year, interest income will be $36,255 and the ending balance will be $398,809. So for the year 2042, the starting balance will be $398,809, but there will be no annual contribution. So year-end interest income is $39,880, and ending balance will be $438,689. Using a similar calculation until Kelly's retirement age, which is 2057, the total balance at the time of retirement will be $1,665,924. For 35 years the total contribution made by Kelly is $130,000 and profit due to compounded annual interest of 10% is $1,535,924. That's indeed a lot of money. This is due to making the best use of compound interest and not taking off the interest income every year like Raj and John. Let's now look at scenario 4 for Priya, which is also based on making the most of compound interest. Unlike Kelly, Priya plans to start investing in stocks from the year 2042 until year 2057 with an initial deposit of $10,000 and a monthly contribution of $1,000 which is double the monthly contribution of Kelly. So we can conclude the following from this scenario. The duration will be 15 years. The investment type will be in stocks. Since she plans to invest in stocks, her annual rate of interest will be around 10%. Her yearly contribution will be $12,000 as she plans to contribute $1,000 every month. Based on these values, we can generate this table. As you can see, by the retirement age of year 2057, Priya will have an ending balance of $461,169. Her total contribution will be $190,000. Her total profit or interest income will be $271,169. It's interesting to see that Although Priya contributed double the monthly contribution when compared to Kelly, her ending balance is nowhere close to Kelly's. This shows the importance of investing early.
let's do a quick comparison of all the four scenarios. Raj decided to play it very safe and preferred to put money in a savings account, which resulted in a very low retirement income. Although John decided to invest and not depend on a savings account, he did not reinvest the interest income, which made him lag behind in retirement savings. Priya liked the idea of reinvesting interest income, but she didn't start until 2042, so she couldn't catch up with Kelly even though she doubled her monthly contribution. Kelly made the best decision with retirement planning by deciding to invest and not depending on a savings account. She started early and also reinvested the interest income. To summarize, the trick to investing is to get started. And you have to start now. Time needs to be on your side for a good result from investing. The thought of, am I too old to invest? comes to everyone's mind. Remember, KFC was started when the founder was 63 years old because he could not stay on SSN. Although the best time to start investing is early, it is never too late to start. Better late than never. Compound interest helps you to build money without lifting a finger. True wealth cannot be achieved without the benefit of compound interest. Although it requires a long-term outlook, compound interest can amplify your wealth trajectory, help you prepare for future financial needs, and improve your general lifestyle. As a wise man once said, money makes money, and the money that money makes, makes money. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Come back soon for more productivity videos.